Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are the living light who transformed darkness into light. Through the blessings of this glorious Sunday, make us worthy to praise you with all those who saw the radiant light of your resurrection. We worship and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living one who by his death gave life to his creation. By his resurrection he saved his church, gave joy to his flock, and brought us back to his Father, and enriched us with the gifts of his Spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Only begotten Son, you were born of the Father before all ages, and by your creative will you separated light from darkness on this, the first day of the week. You fashioned all creation to honor Adam, the image of your majesty. We praise and thank you and celebrate, proclaiming, Blessed are you, for you appeared in the flesh on earth like us, and you lived among us. Blessed are you, for you were buried and counted among the dead, and you shined your light in the sadness of the tomb. Blessed are you, for you rose to life, giving good hope to all. You filled the holy angels with radiance, and they appeared at your tomb like flashes of lightning. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense, to make us worthy to rejoice in the glory of your radiant resurrection. Breathe life into our departed and make them worthy to stand at your right hand in your eternal light that you have prepared for those who love you. With them we praise and thank you for your graces and glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, forever.
O Lord, accept the fragrance of our incense and our prayers, and may we become a sweet fragrance through our good works and actions. Hear our petitions and grant rest to our departed in your dwelling place of joy. O Lord, our God, to you be glory forever. Kadishat Aloho Kadishat Khayatono Kadishat Lohu Shout with joy from the mountain, Sunday is a fee so great. Offer praise to the Lord God, and with angels celebrate. First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, when I came to you proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet we do speak a wisdom to those who are mature, but not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. 
This God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. Praise be to God always. <coughs> Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, <clears throat> we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Lord Jesus says, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Now Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Rabbi, then what has happened that you shall not reveal yourself, that you shall reveal yourself to us, but not to the world. And Jesus answered and said to him, whoever loves me shall keep my word, and my father shall love him, and we will come to him, and we will make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word that you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who has sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that the Father shall send in my name, he will teach you everything, and he shall remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or be afraid. This is the truth, peace be with you. We speak to you the wisdom of God, mysterious, hidden. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now this episode of St. Paul in the letter to the Corinthians is quite interesting because it's quite personal. We've mentioned before, Corinth was a very difficult parish. These people are always difficult with it among themselves and difficult with St. Paul. 
And so when St. Paul says that when I was among you, I was very apprehensive, I was anxious, I was worried. How are they going to take this? What are they going to think? But he says, but in the end, I just simply proclaim to you Jesus Christ, Yeshua Meshicho, Jesus Messiah, and him crucified. What St. Paul is making an allusion to is when he was in Athens in the earlier days, and he's meeting with all these Greeks, and the Greeks like to discuss high ideas and philosophy, and he's in the famous Agora, the place where Socrates taught, where Plato taught, the area where all the high fluting ideas were discussed. And so he tries his hand at that. He even quotes from some of the pagan authors, and he tries to make it look and sound like the world. And in the end, they basically just laugh at him. When they realize he's talking about the resurrection of the body, well, for them, that's about the stupidest idea you could have. We finally get rid of this thing, and then you say we get it back later. And then others were a little more contemptuous. They're like, oh, that's an, inter that's, that's, that's an interesting idea. You have an interesting opinion. Uh, we'll listen to you may maybe, maybe next week. And that was it. He leaves with one person who's interested in hearing more. So when he realizes that trying to put it in the categories of the world, total disaster. So that's why now he says, when I'm in Corinth, I came and I announced Jesus, the anointed one, and him crucified. And he mentions later on, the crucifixion for the Greeks is stupid. That's your God, a publicly condemned criminal executed in capital crime. And of course, for the Jews, it's a big scandal. That's not the Messiah. The Messiah is triumphant and victorious. He didn't die as a criminal at the hands of the Romans. And so he says, it's a scandal to the Jews and stupid idiocy to the Greeks. And that's why he says, so what I come to you is I announce simply the reality of what God accomplishes in the world. And that accomplishment historically is Jesus the Messiah and through crucifixion. And then he speaks of it as being wisdom. Wisdom in its basic understanding is basically the ordering of points between one end to the goal. But you have to see the goal first before you can start up anything. I've elaborated on this in the bulletin this week. But wisdom then is the sight of seeing. When we speak about the wisdom of God, which is mysterious and hidden, St. Paul says in this epistle, God has hidden this before the foundation of the world. This has always been something that he has desired to unveil and unfold. And it's only now in the fullness of time that we can give this. So he speaks of it as mysterious because it's hidden. Zipping around through the internet, they're not categorically mentally disposed to hear about the crucifixion. They're just looking for fun and please nothing lasting longer than 120 seconds. And that's mentally, St. Paul, human nature doesn't change. We just have more toys now. But the human nature and the human attitude is the same. Make it easy, make it pretty, and entertain me. Otherwise, go to, you know, leave. The attitude is exactly the same. So St. Paul is saying, so I'm in Corinth, Corinth. You are a sophisticated and cosmopolitan city. You have lots of money. You have harbors on both sides and the money flows in. You have one of the most famous temples. Of course, the temple is Aphrodite. Let's go talk about the goddess of venereal pleasure. All right, that's Aphrodite. That's a huge temple up. It towers over and it rains over all of Corinth. So he gets there because there's people establishing the church, preaching the gospel. You have your little handful of people who are there, but coming into Corinth, you want everyone to hear this message. So I come in very apprehensive, he says. But I come to my senses, and I realize there's only one wisdom that has any eternal value. And that wisdom God is unfolding to you, and that wisdom in time, in place, now, yes, is historically this criminal who died at the hands of the Romans, who was betrayed by his own people in Israel, and who rose from the dead to bring you life. So it's quite a strength that we have here seeing. But he's very honest about it. It's not him speaking. It's God's message. Our Lord says as much also in the, in the, last, in the gospel at the Last Supper. I have taught you, I have told you. 
And if you have these words, you know them, if you keep them, if you observe them, that means you see that they are good, you love them. And if you love them, my Father will love you and we will love you and we will come and we will dwell within you. Remember last week we talked about on the Feast of the Holy Trinity, that the Trinity is not a philosophical theory. The Trinity is a revelation which shatters all of the preconceptions of the Jews of the generation. Because you wind up understanding that this Jesus of Nazareth is also God, but always making a distinction between himself and God, and yet there's only one God. And so this whole uh, revealing, this whole manifestation that takes place, and as we mentioned, it's about knowing who God is. It's a revelation of love and of friendship, which is why our Lord says at the Last Supper, if you heard what I have said, if you see it and appreciate it, that means you love it, you keep it. If you don't love it, it doesn't matter, it's just another opinion. Be Buddhist, be Hindu, be Catholic, be an evangelical, be nothing. It's all the same, it doesn't matter, whatever floats your boat. That's the world's attitude, they don't care. Which is why our Lord says, if you've heard these words and you adhere to them, that means you've seen something in them of value, and you love them. And because you love them, the one who is trying to speak to you will love you in response. And we will come to you, and we will dwell with you. Because it's the same attitude on the human level, that when we love someone, we want to see them. It's part of the whole thing of the pandemic, right? You can't see your parents who are dying in the nursing homes. You can, well, fortunately, we're not, we, have a, we have a much easier time in Maine. But this whole idea of being separated, it's what, exactly what our Lord talks about. Because St. Jude asked the question, how is it that you're going to reveal yourself to us and not to other people? Because the kind of question is honest. If we're walking down the street, when we're in Jerusalem, they see all of us. They don't see us and they don't see you, kind of a hole in the middle of the group. So how are you going to be seen by us but not seen by others? And that's when our Lord goes into this whole discussion about you've heard my word, you adhere to it, you love it. Love will be the response, reciprocated, love for love. We have the Feast of the Sacred Heart coming up this week. All that our Lord asks St. Margaret Mary is he saying, look, the people in the world, 17th century already, they don't really care about this redemption. Ah, they go to church. But the idea that God himself died and rose in triumph, revealing eternal life and opening that possibility to me, they don't think about it. And so he asked this obscure nun in a little tiny village, you at least, Sister Margaret Marie, right? You return love for love. I can't. I'm just an obscure little nun here in the convent somewhere. And he does tell her earlier in the revelations, Margaret, Sister Margaret, if I could have found someone more obscure, more insignificant, um, I'd be talking to her. Wham! The path of the sacred heart is not something where he goes, oh, it's fine, it'll be fine, we'll beat this, and, and religion's all about just feeling good and warm and tingly. No, our Lord says to Sister Margaret to her response, Margaret, Margaret, he says to her, yes, if we could have found somebody more obscure and insignificant, I would talk to her instead. That's the way our Lord works in his paths. It's a totally different vision of religion. But all he asks is to return love for love, just to respond to what we've done, what my Father, what we've revealed to you. It's when you have made that birthday cake for one of your friends. She doesn't know, you just show up on the doorstep, it's her birthday, you want to surprise her. And she looks at you and goes, oh, it, well, you know, chocolate's really my favorite, and in any case, I'm really busy. But it was a nice thought, Home, the door gets shut. You're not going to be really happy because you've done something as a gesture of friendship and it's not reciprocated. This is the revelation of the Trinity of what is taking place because God wants to reveal who he is. 
And so that the hidden father who always remains hidden is revealed in historical time through the son, the face, the visible face of the hidden father in the eternal word. And that's why our Lord says, you'll know me and you will see me because you've heard and in hearing you adhere and in adhering you love and in loving we reciprocate that love and you will be transformed. You will be transfigured because we will come and we will dwell within you. And that whole work of that transformation of the divine spirit which is in the church and in us individually through our baptism and through chrismation, that's the path in which the God, the manifestation of love, the fathers refer to the spirit as being the eternal divinum osculum, the divine kiss, because it is the expression, he is the expression of the eternity of love between the Father and the Son in that one single divinity. And so that on Pentecost, when the Spirit is given to the church, to that body of Christ on earth, it is that divine embrace to say everyone now, individually, you can receive this divine embrace and this divine kiss if you wish to. You could never have shoved that door open and thrown the cake at her on that birthday and said, but you're going to take it anyway. God is never going to shove somebody into the beatific vision. You don't love on earth, you don't love on earth, you're not going to want to love for all eternity. So no, not everyone goes to heaven. Heaven is the response of a grounded, reciprocated love, love for love. And if we don't learn how to love here, we don't learn how to love anywhere. And that's why hell is defined as the place where they do not love. And when we do not love, then what's it about? Me. It's all about me. Who do I love? Me, of course. I love me. Which is why we're watching the unraveling of our society. Because everyone is about me. And it's completely contradictory to what our Lord taught. And so as a result, what we pray for in these days is that that spirit of God, that divine kiss, the divinum osculum, penetrate our lives and give us light to be able to see profoundly within that manifestation of the Spirit so that we come to learn personally who God is in my life concretely. The way he directs me in detail through the pine trees of Maine. Not some historical thing 2,000 years ago, but how am I meant to be transformed today? And that's hard. We all know that loving another person is hard. It has its magnificent moments. But in loving someone and being with them and attached to them, it's hard. And our Lord doesn't make it easier just because one side of the friendship is God. Because he wants us really to become the people that we're meant to be. And a lot of times that requires for him to say to us, well, yes, quite honestly, I could have found somebody more backward. I would be communicating with that person. Which is why at the beginning of this letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul says to the parish, look around you. There aren't many powerful people, not many rich people, not many people with any worldly clout among you. Because God chooses the nothing of the world to bring down the strong. And he chooses the things which are not to bring down those things that are. That's the beginning of this letter. He's certainly not putting icing on any of the message from the beginning of this letter. And so what we ask for is that in this revelation of the triune God in the church historically, but also within us personally, we ask first for that penetrating light. Lord, allow me to see where I am at. When we love someone and we have those little tete-a-tetes over coffee, and he tells us, well, you know, you really were a jerk last Tuesday, but it's just between us, you don't get angry at that person because you know that he loves you in telling you that. You don't like hearing it, it's painful. But that's why the first step in the spiritual life is we want God to show us and speak to us and tell us who we are personally. We can't be healed or advanced if we don't actually know where we're starting from. So we pray for that light, that the Spirit of God give us that manifestation of wisdom so that we can see where we're at, to know where we need to go. And the path is just charity.
love for love. But we have to start somewhere. And so we ask that the Lord God give us this ability so that we also can enter into that whole chain when St. Paul says, I preach to you this message hidden from the foundation of the world, but now being unveiled to you. This is a gift. And it's not easy because it's Christ crucified. But if you embrace that crucifixion, the promise is, is you will find love, you will find life, you will find healing, and you will find it for the eternal moment of what we call heaven in English. But we learn to love now. That's why our Lord answers the question to St. Jude, that's how you will see me, you will know me, and the world will remain in its blindness and I will be unknown to them. So we ask our Lord so that we can say with St. Paul that these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit and the Spirit delves in everywhere, to everything, even to the very depths of God. That's the gift we're looking for because that is what initiates the love which has only, only healing aspect and eternity to it. And so may the Lord God reveal, to himself, reveal himself to us personally, grant us that light of wisdom, and then inflame our spirits and our minds with that divine charity which heals and radiates light to all around it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We will continue with the profession of our faith on page 748, 748. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Tell what my deb hand aloho, while what aloho dam had a talyunt. When absurgo taibo toh, heul by toh, was good at Hayek Lord God.
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saints Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Elisha. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the Anaphora of the Twelve Apostles on page 754. 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God.
peace and security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy. Make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It Truly, it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with your voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify, and proclaim. Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit. You are holy and the giver of all that is good. For our salvation, your only begotten Son became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by his divine plan he saved and redeemed us. And Sabe Lahomida, Corin Chanton, O Bara Hukad, Wax Oya Bilatalamita, O Cardo Mara, Saba Hola Mehene, Colo, O no Denita, Fahoro. Man Hamro U Men Mayo Barahu Kodesh Yabil Talmita O Kado Mara Sabishkawa Mehene Kulhu Hono Denita Demohodila Diati Kihdato Dahlo Faiku, Wahlov Sagi, Mete Shadu, Mete Hamba, Hosoyon, Haume, Wahoy, and Al Alam Alamin. Whenever you eat 
this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. you to have mercy on your worshipers and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time, to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, sinful children, receive your graces. We thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and we ask you, as compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. Adin Morio, Anin Morio, that by his descent he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences, so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather, make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O oh Lord, this divine sacrifice for your church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, with blameless lives, with purity and holiness. May they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, St. Elisha, assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured suffering for our sake, for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, 
Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf, and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Compassionate Lord, we meet, we, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness, and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O oh Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, so that through them we may be forgiven and be made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Bless us.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, O Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and for the glory of your holy name and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation, and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, 
now and forever. So just two announcements. One, as always, it's always a delight to have you with us. There are books in your pews on the Maronite Church. Some of you have already may have looked at them. You are welcome to take them with you. you could, they're, they're for you. So if you want, you can take them home. And the second announcement is just a reminder that those who wish to stay and pray, you're more than welcome to stay as long as you'd like in the church. But for all visiting, please take it outside so you can visit out on the sidewalk. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the most holy trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.